Welcome back to another episode of and thank you for joining us to talk a little Scream. And this one's been a highly, highly debated topic since Scream 5 dropped out, particularly around the scene with Dewey. Yeah. theory will explore each kill and other variables to determine if there was two or more killers in Scream 5. And as always, we will leave it to you to decide which theory is correct. Or maybe none of them. Or maybe none of them. Some have said that the death of Judy seems to reveal Sam as a third killer. Others say that the death of Dewey reveals Stu as a third killer. For this video, we are ruling out any interviews that are outside of this movie and any different versions of the scripts. We are going to be focusing solely on the actions and mannerisms of each ghost face and each kill. Now, I will tell you, going into this, I was on board for the three killers. Not it being Stu as one of them, but it being Sam. So we're going to find out if by the end of this video, if I still believe that is the case, or if I have changed my mind. In the opening of Scream 5, we see Tara texting with Amber shortly before being called by Ghostface. However, we soon learn that Tara is not texting with Amber, but instead she has been texting with the killer all along before being attacked. So let's break down this scene and what we learn later on in the film. The text messages and phone call is coming from two separate killers. This is evident when we see Tara talking to one of the killers when the other jumps out from behind her in the kitchen. The person texting Tara knows more intimate details about her, thus the comments about Wes. The video of Amber could have been pre-recorded. Also, we learned that Richie was in Modesto with Sam during the attacks. Rule number one, never trust the love interest. They seem sweet, caring, supportive, and then welcome to Act 3 where they're trying to rip your head off. I was with Sam in Modesto when Tara was attacked. The time to travel from Modesto to Woodsboro, which is based on Santa Rosa, is 2 hours and 9 minutes, 138.2 miles. Tara is attacked around 9.30 p.m. That means that Richie would have had to leave Modesto at 7 p.m., commit the crime, and then return to Modesto at around midnight, providing there was no traffic. So since Sam did not refute his statement, uh... This indicates that not only is Amber the killer that attacks Tara, but she would be the person texting her as well and not calling her on the phone. With Amber identified, we now learn her killing style. Amber targets the midsection first. When she has the upper hand and goes in for the kill, she targets the chest, and she is violent. Leaving the scene, we're going to have to identify the person that is on the phone with Tara. Is it Richie? Or someone else? It would make sense that the person talking to Tara would be Richie. It wouldn't be Christine talking about her daughter in group, but her sister to Richie. Anyone with a connection to Tara would be talking about the things that she likes. We meet Amber the next day at school along with Wes, Chad, Liv, and Mindy. They are discussing the previous night's events and the possible connection to Ghostface. It is also here where we kind of gain some insight around Amber not liking Sam. How is Sam? She's coming? Yeah. Watch everything get worse. This is further established at the hospital when Sam introduces the twins and Wes separate from Amber. It's a chilly introduction. Something must have happened between the two of them, most likely being driven from Sam. But we also learned that Sam does not get along with Judy. Nice to see you, Deputy Hicks. So many fun memories. It's Sheriff Hicks. I remember you too. And all the trouble you used to cause your family. Your presence here is not helping. So maybe when the sun comes up, you and your boyfriend can hit the road and leave it to people who actually care about this community. And her reaction to her is more on the defensive than with Amber. 
The kids go to the bar where Amber recaps the story of Sam leaving Tara when she turned 18. To me, Sam is not cool. Her dad left her mom, right? Walks right out when Tara's eight. Sam's 13. Sam started acting out, getting in trouble with the cops. And then, on Sam's 18th birthday, she leaves. Ghosts them all. Maybe Sam's changed. I just don't want to see Tara hurt again. So what, you're protecting Tara from her own sister? Oh. Well, someone has to. After a confrontation with Vince, which causes everyone to be thrown out, Vince is led into a trap where the killer strikes him from behind in the throat. Not in the body, and no aggression. It's safe to say that this killer is Richie. You may be asking, well, Richie was in the hospital. How could he have been in two places at once? Well, there was a bit of a time jump between Vince's death and what happened at the hospital. Hey, Vince, come on, you don't want to hurt anyone. Leave these kids alone and come up with Jenna. Fuck you, Ryan. Let's go. Ryan. Come on. Hey, Ow. Hey, what are you doing with me? Hey, yo. What the hey. fuck is wrong hey. with you, man? Get out of here. I'm calling the cops. Go. I'll see you soon, sweetheart. Fuck you, man. You kids, too. Let's go. Fuck you, Riley. Ah, Vince. I'm sorry, Dewey. I'm all right. We're going to use this deleted scene to fill in that gap. Dewey? You know why you're here? Vince Snyder got murdered right after he used my head as a piñata. Couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. Where'd you go after you left the bar? Don't worry, Judy. I didn't do it. I walked home. My neighbor saw me. We learned a few things from this deleted scene. The first is that Dewey was at the bar and got into an altercation with Vince and then walked home afterwards. We also see that everyone is at the police station while Sam and Tara are asleep in the hospital room. Sam is startled awake which could likely be from Richie rushing into the room and falling into his chair while trying to get the movie on his phone and his alibi set up. If we think about Dewey's statement, he would likely be arriving to his house on foot at the same time that Richie would be getting to the hospital in his car. So no one at this point really had been picked up for statements yet. This leaves Amber with enough free time to call Sam at the hospital, which we see on her caller ID. Amber is all business on the phone, and she reveals that she wanted to lure Sam back. Not something that we feel that Richie would have said on the phone. And if it was Richie that was calling, Sam would have heard him. Ghostface was in the same room as her behind the door. Like with Vince, this killer strikes high and for the neck. It only makes sense that Richie would be behind this attack and escaped through the second door of the break room. Where did the costume go after the attack? In his book bag, which we saw him arrive at the hospital with. Only Amber shows up at the hospital and she is visibly frustrated with Richie as the two verbally joust about who is more likely the suspect in the attack on Sam. Later on, after Mindy reveals to everyone the rules of a requel, along with who's safe and who the primary suspect may be. I think it's pretty clear who the killer is at this point. Who? You? <laughs> it makes perfect requel sense. That actually does make a lot of sense. Yeah. Sam leaves the Meeks home upset, leaving Richie to find a ride since we saw Richie interacting with Amber at the hospital after the attack. It's safe to say that he left with Amber and then they followed Wes to his home to break the requel rules and stage their attack at the hospital. We have now reached the scene where not only myself, but some other Scream fans believe or believe that there might be a third killer involved. At the Hicks home, it is very likely that Richie is making this call because unlike the call to Sam earlier and more like the call to Tara, this killer likes to toy with victims on the phone and references Psycho. As we see Judy race up her walkway to the house, she is met by Ghostface who stabs her in the stomach, just like we saw with Tara. This killer swings for the chest like with Tara and when it's blocked, they swing their other hand down onto the handle to break the block. 
This is followed by a series of rage-filled stabs to Judy's body. We then see the final blow where the killer's hand is raised in the air, just like we see later in the film when Sam kills Richie. Sam swings her knife with a similar rage that we see in the scene, and then she holds the knife in the air for a few moments just before delivering the final blow. And Sam didn't like Judy. Mm -hmm. And Sam didn't like Judy. Now, as much as I felt that Judy's killer was Sam, she isn't. And here is why. After Judy is stabbed the first time, we see our killer allow the knife to fall downward in their hand while holding the handle with two fingers, just like Amber does when stalking Tara on the floor. Similar styles, spinning of the knife, it's safe to say that I was wrong, that Amber is under the mask killing Judy. I'm highly disappointed by this, but I can't refute it anymore. Back inside, we see Wes lured into a trap like Vince was. As Wes goes to investigate the door opening after his mother doesn't respond to him, we see Ghostface appear behind him and go for his throat, just like with Vince, just like at the hospital. Richie swings high while Amber goes low. It's kind of funny, isn't it? Yeah, well, I mean, Amber's short. Richie's a little taller, mm -hmm. so I guess it makes sense. Yeah, the one thing that always kind of comes up is people's like, oh, look at the heights. It's a stuntman. Yes. Always a stuntman, yes. except for maybe one or two scenes where mm -hmm. the actual killer would get under the robe. Like, Richie got under the robe when he went to go stalk Mindy from behind. Yeah. That was him, same mm -hmm. as Billy doing that in the first one. Yeah. But the stuntmen, they changed the styles of the killer. Some time passes between the Hicks crime scene and the hospital as we see dusk begin to settle over Woodsboro. We now come to one of the most discussed scenes in Scream 5. Dewey's death. This is where many people believe that a third killer took him out because of his height and his strength. The first victim is a police officer with Richie's signature throat slash. We hear some creeping in the halls. Richie finds Tara who is then attacked by Ghostface and knocked out. The killer answers Sam's phone call to Richie and talks about finishing the job that they started with Tara. I'll make sure to hit all the organs I missed last time. We also hear the killer get frustrated when Sam does not respond with Richie's name as the person to kill. Who do you want to hear die? No, please, I'm begging you, please don't hurt them. Really? You can't save your own sister? All you have to do is say, kill Richie. Dewey and Sam arrive, scaring off the killer only for the killer to jump out and attack Dewey while he's trying to save Richie. We see this killer go high, allowing Dewey to block the blow and overpower the killer. As the fight spills to the floor, the killer manages to get the upper hand and go for another kill shot. When Dewey blocks it, the killer drives their other hand down on the blade like we saw with Judy. Dewey manages to grab his gun and shoot the killer several times. Before they can all escape, Dewey realizes that he needs to abide by the rules and ensure that the killer is unable to come back. But Dewey is distracted by his phone and is stabbed in the stomach. It's here where we see Dewey's knees buckle and he goes from standing straight to slouching. Don't believe it, I'll rewind the clip back and you can look at it again in slow motion. This gives the appearance of the killer being taller. The knife to the back drives Dewey down further but we then see the killer quickly bend down and lunge up in order to drive both knives higher inside of Dewey to almost stand straight. And as we can see, Dewey is taller than the killer. He did the Negan dip. Don't say that. He did. No. He did the Negan dip. Leave Dewey alone. He did the fatal it's, Negan it's dip. If that's not enough to convince you that there is not a third killer here, we see the killer in this scene wearing a bulletproof vest. The vest was Officer Judy's. It was taken from her patrol car after she was murdered because we see her trunk open when Sam arrives at her house. Meaning our killer in the hospital is Amber, not Stu. Mm -hmm. Both kept true to their styles and characteristics through the remainder of the film too. Richie is a sneaky little bastard, spineless <laughs> killer, who failed to sneak up on Mindy and then revealing himself as the killer to Sam while stabbing her. Whereas Amber remained aggressive in her attacks with Chad and even Liv, even attempting to trick Sydney and Gail outside of her home, but then reverting back to being aggressive. Finally, let's not forget that Amber admits to killing Dewey in the kitchen. Yeah. 
But that whole trying to trick Sydney and Gail was just absolutely so stupid. You can see that. She, She's just I gotta saying, laugh. Yeah, I, I laugh, gotta laugh yeah. because you can see that even she didn't believe herself no, when she came out there. No, it was terrible. She was like, oh my God, help. And then she's like, fuck it. Yeah. Because I think that's, she realized how stupid she looked and no one was going to believe her. So she's like, forget it, I'll just shoot you. Yeah, the, like I said, Richie was the spineless fraud in, in the movies. Because remember, he was in the closet like, oh my God, I'm hiding from Ghostface. face. Yeah, that, he was, he was something else, let me tell you. So honestly, there you have it. Look, I was on board with there being three killers for this movie. This video was originally written about Sam being that killer, but having gone and looked at that scene with Judy again and then watching Tara's like, damn, I was wrong. And I don't like to be wrong about it because I really thought that she was the killer. Yeah. And I know a lot of you really think Stu is the killer, but not, yeah. sorry. Not in, not in this one anyway. So, you know, as far as we concern, while we feel these theories are good, they're debunked. Yes, I agree. Now, that doesn't mean that there wasn't a third mastermind playing behind the scenes, pulling some strings, but there was definitely not a third person under the ghost face mask. There was not a, a third person wielding the knife. Now, while we feel this is debunked, we will leave it to you to decide if you agree with us. Mm -hmm. If not, let us know what your thoughts are and how you can prove it differently. Yeah. Love to hear it. Mm -hmm. Don't forget it is Scream Month. And it is also the quest for 5,000 subscribers. So we would love to hit 5,000 subscribers during Scream Month. Because <laughs> with all of your help, we hit 1,000, became YouTube partners because of Scream. So it would be so awesome to hit that 5,000 mark with yes. Scream. Yeah. Scream has been our sweet spot. <laughs> yes. And Terrifier. Yes. <laughs> Now, along the journey to get to 5,000 subscribers, every video that gets 25 likes and 25 comments, you'll win some movie theater swag. And when we hit 100 likes and comments on the video, you'll win a one sheet poster from the theater. And you can help us do that by... Liking, subscribing, and sharing. When we hit 5,000 subscribers, you have a chance to win this box of strawberries, scream, cereal, signed by... Matthew Lillard and David Arquette. Mm -hmm. And I think it's gonna be even more special if it turns out Stu's a lot. Yeah. Yeah, the value goes up. And it may also be signed by Rose McGowan. So there is Possibly. a convention coming mm -hmm. up with her. We may grab her signature on it. So we'll see. Yes. And that convention is literally right after Scream comes out. Mm -hmm. It's the same weekend, I think. Yeah, but Scream will drop on Thursday. Mm -hmm. So. Anyway, let us know what you think about this video. Thank you for joining us for another Popcorn Theory and any other video that you check out on our channel. And until the next... See ya.